Well, hi, everybody. Hey, I want to welcome you to uh, our Top Left's uh, special webinar today, where we are going to talk about our new feature, the client portal. I want to welcome everybody. Um, <clears throat> yeah, thanks for giving us your time today. I'll try to, to make sure we don't let this take too long. And, you know, it's, it's going to be trying to make it pretty informal. And, uh, yeah, I hope to share with you this, this new thing that we're doing that should, uh, should solve some of your problems. Um, you know, if you don't know me, my name is Matt. Uh, Matt Fox. I uh, go by VP of the top left. I, um, you know, I coordinate stuff within the unit here. I, I oversee everything and uh, especially our product stuff uh, in terms of, you know, hey, how can we build new stuff that helps solve new problems? And uh, uh, yeah, I've been with uh, Kirchhoff Technologies. Uh, you know, if you're new to top left, maybe you don't know, but top left is a unit within an MSP, right? Uh, we, and it's pretty established now, you know, since I think 2007 we're up to we're more than 30 people now uh in in the whole group and uh you know we built kanban boards to solve all of our own problems and um yeah so it's been very useful and we share it with other msps obviously now too so um yeah we're excited to talk about client portal today um i think on the webinar it's going to be mostly existing clients uh but I, I think there are some some new customers as well so we definitely uh welcome everybody here um why don't you just uh find the chat section in zoom and uh go ahead and put in your name and uh your your where you're from and your company i'm interested to see uh what kind of people uh we have here and um yeah i'll shout those out when you do that so uh, yeah so just in the zoom chat put in your name your, your company and, and uh, where you're from and uh, yeah, and then we'll get started. Um, uh, while you're doing that, actually, I'll uh, I'll say uh, kind of what to expect here. So um, I'm going to share a little bit about what some of the problems that uh, oh, chat is disabled, huh? I am being told. Um, Right now, maybe. <clears throat> yeah, go ahead and see if you can put in your chat. Chat now, folks. I got to be honest. We had a marketing person who was better at this than me, and uh, she moved on. <laughs> and now I have to handle everything myself until we hire a new one. So hopefully this goes well. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. So we're going to talk about uh, yeah, what kind of problems does this solve? We're going to talk about um, what what does this actually do? How does it solve these problems? Uh, we're going to talk, talk about uh, kind of where are we in our launch? Um, what new things? I mean, what do we have today or you know by the end of the week? Uh, what things are coming soon? And um, yeah, still to wait for. And then um, you know, hey, how you, how you can get help with this? How you can sign up when it's available? And I have a special offer for you to say thanks for coming. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so, okay, thanks for everybody. Uh, let's see, we got folks from, uh, Judy from Seattle, uh, welcome, Frank in Omaha, Jeff from uh, Manitowoc, uh, welcome, Robbie and, uh, and Richard, hey, thanks everybody for coming, and, um, Let's talk about client portal. So um, what kind of problems does this solve? Um, if you were like us and a lot of the MSPs that we talk to, maybe you've said something like this. Um, you know, I, I just get too many, uh, like, why do my customers always send me these messages? What's going on with my ticket or my project? You know, they always want to know, okay, what if there was an easier way to answer those questions? Well, what's going on with this project now? Um, maybe you say, I spend a lot of time in project meetings with customers and it would be a lot easier if they could come kind of prepared and know where we are so we don't have to start from the beginning every single time when we meet in a project meeting uh, sometimes you might say i'm waiting on a customer for certain work they need to do something or they need to answer something and they're just not getting back to me i have to wait like my work is getting delayed because of my customer uh, or um, maybe sometimes, uh, you know, maybe as you're developing your MSP product, you maybe have different tiers of service and you want to say, okay, I need new, um, 
I need new things to offer in my kind of higher tiers that would make the higher tiers more attractive so that I can uh, pull people up to, to that and increase my revenue. Okay. So uh, those are sorts of things that, uh, you know, we've said and other MSPs have said and client portal can solve all of those. So let me explain um, kind of what, what it is. And then I will give you uh, give you a demonstration. I'll show you. Okay. So uh, it, it's actually really simple. Okay. Customers can uh, are, are now able to log into top left on their own. <laughs> that kind of sums it up, actually. So, um, you know, you, you don't, you no longer do you have to just, you know, maybe, I don't know what people are doing, but, you know, screen share with them uh, to show them what's going on via Kanban boards or, you know, print out the Kanban board as a like PDF and email it off or whatever, some things that people may have been doing, but you don't have to do that. Now you can just give them a login. Yeah, you can invite them and say, hey, here's everything. It's up. It's up to the date, it's up to the second, uh, you know, up to date tells you what's going on with your, your tickets and, and your projects and whatnot. And they can do that whenever they want. Uh, so it works by, uh, it's all based on the rec, uh, data that you already have in your PSA, whether that's ConnectWise or Autotask. And um, <clears throat> meaning uh, you give access based on the companies that you already have set up in your, uh, in your PSA and, all, and those contact records, okay? Um, so you, I would expect you already have those sorts of things set up for the key people that you work with at your clients. And, uh, and so that's what we make use of to um, kind of grant access to license these, uh, license the companies and how to uh, invite the actual individuals who you want to be able to use these Kanban boards. It will work in terms of um, individual Kanban boards. So um, it kind of by default, Kanban boards are not available. Uh, the, like the, the boards that you already have uh, are not available, but you can make specific boards available if you want to for your users. So you, that can be any board. It can be your existing Kanban boards. We kind of think that most people are going to use it by making boards that are dedicated to sharing with customers. And, uh, and the reason is you probably want to kind of customize the exact details that are available on the cards. Uh, you might want to um, set different like work in progress limits or not or not have the limits on those boards or you might even want to have entirely different columns as you you know you map out your workflows and um you know you have your columns that represent the stage in the workflow and you might want to have different ones uh for uh, for these specialized uh, client boards uh, the uh, you can have a single kanban board that works for multiple companies. You don't have to make a, a special Kanban board for all of the different companies you want to uh, share it with because it's cust uh, the clients are automatically restricted to uh, only see um, tickets that are for their own company. Uh, we are also going to be, I'll mention this more later, but we're going to introduce an option so that they uh, can also um, only see, they can actually not see the tickets even from their own company. They can only see tickets where they are are the actual contact on that ticket. Uh, that's not available just yet, but, uh, but already they can only see tickets that are for their own company. Uh, that means that you can make one Kanban board to share with all of your customers. And uh, when the customers log in, they just see what's relevant to them. Um, a couple of things just to, to be um, clear about this, what we're not trying to do with this. Um, we do not envision this as a replacement for uh, existing portals. Uh, you know, maybe use Desk Director or maybe you use uh, Cloud Radial or the, you know, the built-in, you know, ConnectWise has a, a client portal. So we're not trying to replace that. Um, definitely, we don't support all of the things that that does. So if you're making, if you have good use out of uh, that, then you are probably going to continue using that. I mean, you know, at least for the time being, we don't see it as a replacement for those things. Um, but it's, uh, you know, because you know, you are using Kanban boards to manage your work. It makes sense to, uh, you know, the, your, your customers get the same benefit out of um, seeing the work on the Kanban boards. So that's what this is all about. Um, but we're not trying to place all of the other uh, functions that these other client portals do. Um, we're also, at the moment, we're not focused on help desk usage. Um, I, I think probably 95% of the requests that we've received for client portal have been focused on project usage. So that's how we've, um, that's kind of what we've been focusing on. 
Um, not that it won't, uh, no, won't work for running a help desk and uh, being a portal for the help desk, but um, we, uh, we're kind of focusing on the project, the project management use case right now. Okay, uh, so that is a lot of the um, uh, kind of introductory matter. Now let me share, I'll show you how it works. And uh, by the way, if you have any questions, toss those in the chat anytime you want. I'll, uh, if I notice it, I'll try to get to it. Otherwise I'll get to, to it at the end when I, when I take questions. Uh, so yeah, um, this is client portal, what a customer sees when they log in. So, uh, you know, it's a little, it's a little bit simplified, but it's substantially the same thing. Um, you know, obviously it's, it's um, recognizable because um, it's substantially the same thing. So you can set up your Kanban boards any way you want. Um, all of the options for uh, the things that you can show and the um, you know, work in progress limits and so on, those are all available. Um, you know, swim lanes, um, automatic ordering and things like that, those are all available for, for the client portal. So you, ba you basically build out the board in the same way that you normally would. Uh, <clears throat> the customer does have a, a simpler experience here. Uh, you can see, you know, there's not where, uh, you know, a normal user would see some menus up here. They don't see that. They have uh, fewer options here under their own account. Um, but it's pretty, you know, hey, it's Kanban boards. Uh, they also don't have options, uh, obviously, for um, some of the things that you can do. You know, in, in, if you're a normal user, you see a little menu here under the cards uh, that has a, a variety of things that you can do to the tickets, and uh, uh, that's gone. So actually, some of it's coming back. It's just gone uh, right now, but uh, some of it will come back as we um, expand this feature in terms of uh, showing more notes and things like that. So I'll explain that more in, in just a bit. But uh, yeah, so that is the experience from the customer, uh, the customer's point of view. When they are invited, their experience is uh, they will get an email from top left, and it's kind of it's kind of white labeled, like we don't mention top left. Uh, we say, hey, you know, your the MSP name has invited you to use this tool. Here's the URL where here's where you should go to uh, set your first password, and then you can log in. It's a very simple email that gets sent to them when they uh, when they get invited, and uh, I'll show you that now. So that is, uh, um, let's talk about how does this kind of work in the back end here. Give you a good idea. <clears throat> So, uh, you know, a, a user in top left, like a technician or a manager, will see the, the uh, client port, um, kind of the client focused boards. <clears throat> so they will see them in this list here and they'll be able to see them. That's no problem. And uh, they will see them with all of the um, all of the different companies that show up on this board. Uh, so actually, I should probably emphasize that a little bit more. So uh, you can notice that, you know, Denise here, I'm logged in as Denise, uh, is part of a company called Key Pool Company, okay? So she just sees uh, these swim lanes. These are just tickets that are that are part of a, a couple of projects that uh, are from Key Pool, okay? But that's not actually, that's just her view of it. Okay, this is what's on the whole board. So if I'm a technician viewing the same board, then I see I see it as, a, as it normally is as a technician. So there's, there is uh, other work that shows up here. You know, here's a, a, a project for Wild Eagle and a project for Future Message. And then finally, somewhere down here, we see, okay, here, so here's a project for, you know, Key Pool. So we do see all of that, but it's just automatically filtered uh, on the client's view. So there's a couple things to can do to actually configure the board. Uh, it's all available here to administrators under the uh, administration section here. It's under users and, and then client portal. So uh, actually, first I'll mention, uh, you would go over to manage subscription and uh, yeah, that doesn't work actually because it's our development uh, environment. But under here is where you would see our, um, uh, either the settings for your subscription, like how many user licenses do you have? And you'd be able to change that and you'd be able to choose how many client portal licenses you need. You need one license for every company who's going to see work on that board. Um, to be able to log in, okay. So um, within each company, you can invite unlimited number of people. Okay, so there's no uh, you, you license the companies. You don't license their individual people. You can have uh, invite one person from a company. Uh, you can invite ten or or fifty people from a company. That doesn't matter. It's just per company. So you do that uh, under manage subscription. Here, uh, set the number of 
uh, client portal licenses you want. Once you've done that, you come over here to client portal option. And here is where you select uh, which companies uh, are assigned to these licenses that you've chosen. Okay, so I have two licenses right now um, and I've assigned them to a couple of different companies here. Under uh, now, and now I need to select from those companies who has access to these boards. Okay, so that is fairly straightforward. I just select one of the licensed companies here and I see all of their contact records and I can invite them with a single click there. It'll send an email to their um, to their account and uh, explain what they need to do to uh, log in, basically set their uh, set their initial password. Uh, and it's easy to remove users as well. Okay, so that determines what companies are allowed to use it and uh, which users within those companies are allowed to use it. The final bit of configuration here is part of the board uh, because as I mentioned, we don't uh, uh, just automatically make every board available to customers. Uh, what we what we do is say yeah, yeah, you need to select which boards are available, and like I said, you, you know you probably make uh, custom boards for those. So uh, that's available from the regular uh, board editing page. There's a new tab here called Portal. Okay, so all of the options for this are under here. It's just simple. Turn it on, turn it off, and then you select uh, which companies have access to. Uh, to this board. Okay, and then uh, you know if those companies are listed, then all of the contacts. That you selected for that company are able to uh, to view that board. This lets you have um, one. Uh, you, you might, for example, have a board that you permit um, just like companies that are going through your onboarding. Uh, they are able to access the specific board that you have for their onboarding project. Maybe if you're managing it that way, uh, and then you might have another board that kind of manages your your general, you know, professional services projects or something like that, which has a different workflow. And uh, when a company has a project ongoing, then you give them a license and then they can you view that board. Uh, so it allows you to do things like that. And that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Uh, it is pretty straightforward. And um, so let me explain uh, what we still have to come. Things that I haven't shown you because they don't uh, they don't exist just yet. But we, are, but we are working hard on all this stuff. Uh, we kind of envision that this will all be available by the end of July or uh, kind of in early August. So this is stuff that's all coming very very soon. Okay, so here's some things that are still going to come. Uh, the option to show records either for the company, uh, which is what you saw before. That's that's what does exist, uh, or the ability to limit it to only their own contact. And that's where they would see me, like for example, their own help desk tickets um, to be able to see that in. That's kind of for the help desk mode. Uh, an option to show notes and time entries, that's coming uh, very soon. I think that's just being reviewed in our process right now. Um, so that's, that'll be optional. Uh, we're also gonna add an option to let the client submit the notes uh, so that it's, it's not all just read only. Actually, I don't think I, explicitly mentioned that but uh, what by default it's all just read only from the customer's point of view but we are going to add the ability to submit new notes when that happens the uh, the resources assigned to that ticket or task will be emailed so you know something has come in um, we're going to add an option to allow them to drag the cards to different columns to update the ticket status and that'll be useful if especially if you're waiting on somebody to do something and the customer knows, okay, you know, I need to answer this question and I need to make this change in my system. And now I've done it and I can move it over into the next stage. It can make your, uh, your uh, workflows very, very efficient. Uh, of course, that'll all just be optional. It will default to read only, but you can enable that if you want it. Uh, we're gonna make a tool that will uh, permit you to kind of um, view, uh, view how the board will look as a client. So that'll make it a little bit easier to make sure that you, uh, uh, you know what they're going to see when they're logged in. And then we're gonna add branding, okay? So that will be uh, uh, being the ability to customize uh, the logos. So you'll be able to re replace our top left logos with your own logo. And um, uh, yeah, and I think control the, the color of the, the menu at the top, I think are the ones that we're, we're expecting. So uh, that'll really allow you to brand this as your own. Okay, uh, so Jeff writes, uh, can we control what columns they can move the card to? Uh, yeah, good question. Um, we're not envisioning that at the moment, but um, what I think that you would do is uh, if you don't want a car, 
uh, if you don't want them to be able to use a column or a certain status, then just don't put that on that Kanban board. Okay, because, uh, and one thing that you can do is you could have, you say you could give customers access to two Kanban boards. One of them could have the full, um, every single column, <clears throat> Uh, representing your workflow and it's read only. And then you could give them access to a second Kanban board and it would have just uh, a smaller, just kind of a subset of the columns, just the ones that you want them to be able to use. And that one has the ability for them to drag. Okay, so on this, on one board where they can drag it, there's only the columns you want them to use. And on the other board uh, is read only and then there's everything. That would be one way to handle that. Uh, Judy says, can the client portal be used for service tickets or is it projects only? Um, is going to be available for help desk. Um, that actually, I should be specific. Um, in is it's going to be a little bit different between ConnectWise and Autotask customers. Okay, so for ConnectWise, a ticket is a ticket. If it's a service ticket, if it's a project ticket, it doesn't really matter. And that's kind of what you see when you make a new Kanban board in top left. You just choose: is this for tickets, meaning service and project tickets? Uh, or is it for projects or something else? Okay, so um, in uh, uh, in ConnectWise mode is going to be available for both service tickets and project tickets from the very beginning. Autotask is going to be a little different in that um, tickets and tasks are separate. So you know, tickets are the service side, tasks are the kind of essentially the same thing, but for projects. Okay, and so in top left right now they are separate. We we do uh, we are planning to, to combine them. Uh, but for now they're separate. So uh, what is available now in Autotask is for tasks, because as I mentioned, this you know most of our requests for this had to do with project use. Okay, so first of all, we're going forward with um, uh, in Autotask mode. It's going to be available for the tasks and the projects. It won't be available for the tickets, meaning the help desk side immediately. But uh, we are aware that that is going to be. Uh, um, uh, something that people might want. So in, as far as we're concerned, we're leaving that as, uh, let, let's wait to hear for some actual requests for it. That's kind of how we do Agile is, you know, like we kind of see this as a, as a maybe. So we're going to leave it until people actually say, hey, yes, we need this. Uh, so if you, if you are going to, you know, if you're an Autotask customer and you're going to be, uh, you want to use this for help desk, then absolutely let us know and we will build it. Uh, okay, uh, I'm gonna continue on a little bit and get to, I do see other questions and I'll get to those. Okay, so here's the pricing. Um, this is gonna be licensed, as I mentioned, based on the company. So if you want one company to be able to see this, uh, then you're gonna get one license. <clears throat> this is gonna start at uh, $30 uh, up to nine licenses. That's if you're paying monthly. Um, if you pay annually, then it comes out to $25 per month. Uh, so it's actually, yeah, if it was to be the whole year, it would be $300 uh, at the beginning of the year. That comes out to $25 uh, per month. Um, then at you know, 10 to 24, 27, 25 to 49 is the next year. And then above 50, it's it's almost a third less um, at $21 or $17.50 if, um, if you're paying annually. So that'll be the pricing. Okay, um, uh, you know, as I mentioned, there's things still to come. So uh, you, how are you gonna stay up to date? Uh, well, I will send you, uh, when we launch and you can actually purchase this in your system, uh, I will send you an email and that will include a couple of uh, promo codes I'll get to. Um, then you'll know that you can um, get it in, in more or less the same state as it is now. There might, uh, a couple of things that I mentioned might already be available by then like showing the notes, uh, but I will send you an email when it is available to purchase. But then uh, how are we gonna know when we keep introducing these new features, okay? So one way is this little bar, uh, little circle here, okay? Um, pay attention to that. If that has a little red number, it means that there's an update there. You should click that because that we are gonna announce it that way to say, uh, you know, this such and such feature for client portal is now available. Uh, and by the way, you can click on that ball and, um, it will allow you to subscribe to get those updates by email so that you'll know you won't even have to worry about watching that on the Kanban board. Um, you can just subscribe to that and uh, it'll get it in your inbox. Oh, and by the way, if you're not a customer yet, uh, obviously you can't do that. Um, just go to um, announcements.topleft.team. Uh, you know what, actually, let me bring that up. 
announcements.topleft.team is where you can see this without actually having the application available. And you can click subscribe to updates, put your, uh, your email in there, and then you'll get all those updates in the inbox, whether or not you're a customer at all yet. Okay, uh, now as a way to say thanks for attending and being one of our first users, um, I am going to send you promo codes when I email you when we launch. Um, it's going to be 50% uh, off for three months if you pay monthly. And uh, if you pay yearly, you're just gonna get, you're gonna get 20% off for um, each license that you buy. <clears throat> and that's gonna be good for one month after the launch, meaning um, I, I, would for, I would expect that you might not immediately know exactly how many customers you want to uh, have in Kanban. So I don't expect you to know that at the, you know, within the next week. So uh, you, you have a month to kind of uh, begin using it, see how it's useful, decide about how many uh, licenses you might want to buy. And by the way, I should mention, you can always, uh, all you do is you buy a certain number of licenses. Within that number of licenses, you can assign and unassign customers as often as you want. So, uh, you know, if you, uh, for example, I'll just make up a use case. If you wanted this to mainly be available for uh, your like onboarding projects when you get a new customer, uh, and you normally have three customers in that uh, uh, in that pipeline at a time, then you just get three customers. And when one of them is onboarded, they don't need to see that anymore. You just unlicense them. Then you assign. Then you have a free license you can assign to the next customer. You can do that as often as you want. Okay, uh, the same. That's the same way as it works for the, the user licensing. And um, you'll have a, about you'll have a month from when we launch to figure out, kind of settle on the number of licenses that you want, uh, and still get that promo offer. And uh, expect to see that uh, the codes to use for that in the um, uh, in your inbox by the by the end of the week or very early next week. Um, now I want to actually show you um, exactly where you're going to go to put that. Uh, to, to purchase those licenses and put in that promo code. Uh, so that comes in here. Uh, you would click uh, the as an administrator. You click the gear icon there. You come to this page, manage subscription. You see some details about your plan here. Then you just click edit. Uh, we see an option for licenses here. Uh, there's going to be a new option here very shortly um, that says client portal licenses. And uh, so you just put the, in the right number there, put in the coupon code here and, uh, and click continue. And then, uh, then you'll see the offer there. And uh, by the way, uh, this is available. It is exactly the same for um, the standard plan and the basic plan. So no matter which one uh, you're on, you, uh, this is all available to you. Okay. Um, Yeah, uh, and that actually brings me to the end. And so I see there are some questions there and I uh, let me answer those. If you do need to uh, go on with your day, thank you for attending, really appreciate that. And I uh, expect to see in your inbox uh, notice when we launch. Okay, so let's see what are the questions I haven't answered yet. Um, Jeff had a follow-up in Vision. This is waiting for a customer. They, yeah, they have work when they're done. They move to the customer responded column and they will still need to see the entire project. Okay, uh, yeah, so, um, I, and I think that would, uh, you would be able to do that with the two Kanban boards uh, method that I used. Uh, you know, perhaps that's not the most elegant thing, but that would be a simple thing that we, that would be available in the, um, available very soon. Um, and as we see how people use it, uh, and you say, okay, we, we do just wanna be able to offer uh, them to use a single Kanban board so they, that they can see the entire project and they can also just manage just uh, one or two of the columns, uh, then we will, uh, as we get feedback on that and see if that would be a useful thing, then definitely we'll consider that. Uh, Dave Airy says, can the movement of the card or task be controlled by the status of the ticket? Uh, yes, so that is, uh, that's how Kanban boards always work. The, uh, at least, you know, top left Kanban boards. Uh, since we are showing you data that's already in your PSA, uh, you know whether it's a ticket or a project or a task or whatever, it has a status, and the statuses are mapped uh, to the columns. Okay, that's kind of the the key thing about the board is uh, we are you know the the columns in the Kanban board map the stages 
of your workflow. And um, so part, uh, part of building out the Kanban board is to map those stages, uh, map the statuses to the columns. And you can, have, um, you can have more than one status mapped to a column. And so uh, when, you know, from top left, if you drag a card from one column to another, that is, means the status of that ticket is changing. So we go back to, you know, when you do that, we uh, send that change back to your PSA, ConnectWise or Autotask. We actually update the status of that ticket for you. Similarly, if the change comes out of the PSA, we, you know, someone has changed a ticket status or some automated, automated workflow has changed status within the PSA, then uh, that can mean that the, the ticket actually moves to a different card uh, column within top left. Uh, Robert says, if enough Autotask users request the service ticket functionality, uh, what kind of timeline could we expect? Oh, um, you know, it, um, I don't know. Um, by the end of August, uh, you know, what we what we usually do is um, set aside some time after we launch a big feature like this for um, fixing bugs, because that always comes up when we <laughs> ship something new, uh, and also addressing these sorts of feature requests fairly quickly. Okay, so if we start to hear about that right away, then we will work on it right away. <clears throat> And uh, Judy says a timeline for launch. Uh, yeah, I would. Ex um, some of the stuff that we need to launch is is uh, being reviewed as we speak. So I expect that I can email you uh, by Friday, maybe could be as early as tomorrow or very early next week. Uh, so we're it's um, it's available very very soon. And that's all of the questions that I see right now. Yeah, so um, thank you for attending. We appreciate your time and um, yeah, glad you were here. And we really look forward to uh, seeing what Client Portal can help you with. And uh, by the way, we really we really uh, hope, we wanna hear your feedback. Uh, we do hope that you'll just take a minute and uh, after you've used it and let us know and say, hey, uh, this looks terrific or um, this isn't gonna work for these couple of reasons. Uh, or, you know, this was pretty good, but these are things that could be better. We really want to hear about this uh, so that we can make it really, really useful for you. So um, you can send that sort of feedback just to um, help at topleft.team. Uh, that's kind of our just regular support email. And, uh, and then we can collect that there. We really appreciate anybody who can take the time to, uh, to do that. Okay, uh, I will just, um, I still see a few people on board on, uh, so I will stay for another minute or two and just wait for some other questions. But uh, yeah, really appreciate you coming. Thank you.